Great to see you. Welcome today. Glad that you are with us. Uh, when you came in, you should have gotten uh, uh, one of these, a little small tattoo. Um, for those of you that are offended by the fact that we gave you a tattoo, you're probably in the wrong church. Uh, <laughs> I'm just saying, somebody asked me one time, Pastor, does anybody in your church have tattoos? I said, we have more ink in our church than a ballpoint pen factory. <laughs> But hang on to that. We're going to come back to that. We, this does have a meaning, and, and we'll get to that. Um, really excited today. I want to start with just a question. I need you to be honest. Answer this question. How many of you um, have struggled, maybe continually struggle, with doing something that you know you shouldn't do, but you do it anyhow? Put your hand up. Anybody? Most of us? If your hand's not up, Jesus, I'm glad you're with us today. <laughs> we all do this. Like There are things that we just know in our heart. I shouldn't do this, but we just don't have the willpower, whatever it is, and we kind of follow through and we do something that we regret. Uh, let me give you an example. It's like 11 o'clock at night. Uh, you see a Taco Bell commercial, and you're like, man, like six gorditas right now would be awesome. And you talk yourself into it. You go to Taco Bell, and the next morning you realize it's now Taco Hell. You should have said no to your stomach, and there's a result. It's not great. We all do these things. So what we're going to do uh, in this series called Skin, some people have asked me, they said, Pastor, what's the, the title? What's that about? Well, we're actually going to be talking about a biblical principle called crucifying the flesh. In other words, we're going to learn to say no to the wrong things and say yes to the right things so that we can live the life that God has called us to live. Because watch this, if you don't get your skin under control, you'll never get your sin under control. And your sin will cost you much more than you've ever wanted to pay. So I'm believing that throughout this series, we're going to uh, really drill down into some personal stuff so that we can get past the things that have been holding us and keeping us living in our past. So I want to start with this, and I need you to be really honest. You can write it down if you want to. Uh, if I were to ask you, what's the greatest temptation that you have? What is that thing that's really, really hard for you to say no to? Um, what would that be? And for some of you, maybe it's more than one thing. There, there's like a couple things that, that you struggle with. But go ahead and at least get that in your mind. Um, write it down if you want to, and we're going to talk about how we can move past some of these things that have control over our life. And for some of you, um, maybe it's drinking something that you shouldn't drink. You know that it's an issue for you, but you just can't say no, or smoking something that you shouldn't smoke. Um, for others, maybe it's an eating thing that you know that you need to eat healthy, because if you don't, uh, it's not going to go well for you. But man, you just can't say no to food. It's an issue. It's a temptation. For others, maybe it's spending money on something you shouldn't spend money on. And listen, at what point do you have enough shoes, right? It's like, when do I have enough shoes? And what we end up doing, spending money we don't have on things we don't really need, and then it puts us in a financial setback. It's, it's a temptation. For others, if we're being honest, the answer is lust. It's like we're, we're at Cold Stone. Like it, love it, got to have it. <laughs> and we'll do whatever we can. We begin pursuing that thing uh, because we can't say no to the temptation. It's, it's a struggle within us. For others, it might be gossip. You are tempted to gossip. You, you are tempted to talk about other people because you would rather talk about other people's problems than actually deal with your own. Gossip is, is a temptation. And maybe you're in the room and you're like, wow, I don't have any of these things, Pastor. Man, this message isn't for me. I would say hold it right there. Uh, maybe your issue is pride with a capital P. <laughs> that you need to deal with some pride today because these things affect all of us. In fact, one of the most influential people in Scripture, somebody that wrote over half of the New Testament, struggled with the same things that we struggle with. Let me read you this text found in the book of Romans from the Apostle Paul. And he said this. He said, I can will it but I can't do it. I decide to do good, but I don't really do it. I decide not to do bad, but then I do it anyway. My decisions, such as they are, don't result in actions. And then he said this, something has gone wrong deep within me and gets the better of me every time. Anybody relate today? Like, you know, it's not, not what I want to do, 
but for whatever reason, we don't have the strength, we don't have the willpower to, to not do that thing that's calling us. And again, it is not just you. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, verse 13. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. And this is what the enemy will do. The enemy will convince you that nobody's got junk like you do. That it's only you, it's only your family that are battling these battles. Everybody else has a perfect life, but the Apostle Paul said, no, no, no. The temptations in your life are no different from what others experience. But watch this. He said, and God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. And there's people here today, maybe you've just recently started following Jesus and you're like, man, I didn't realize it would be this tough. I thought it would get easier. And, and don't, don't miss this point. Check this out. Coming to Jesus does not mean the absence of temptation. It means that you are ready to declare war on that thing that's already been tempting you. It means that you are going to say, it stops now. I am no longer going to continue in this way. I am drawing a line in the sand. And this thing that's been over me, I'm about to get over it. I'm declaring war on it. I'm calling it out. I'm calling it what it is. And I'm saying, it no longer comes to me and goes through me. It stops right now. So we'll all be tempted. And here's what I want for you as we get into the week one of this message. I want this to be really personal today. And I need you to just like take this in and apply it to your life. Don't think, well, this is somebody else's uh, message today. I think it's your message today for everyone in this room. And, and apply it and let's let God speak to our heart in such a way that we can have the power and the ability to get over those things that are over us and begin to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things in life. Sound good? Um, so when it comes to temptation, I think you can break it down into five parts. It starts with a thought. It moves to imagination, then justification, then a choice, then ends in sin. One more time. A thought, imagination, justification, choice, and sin. Let, let me give you handles on this, what this might look like in my context. It starts with a thought. Hot Cheetos. Man. So. And I start imagining Hot cheetahs, man, these would be so awesome. Man, getting that orange all over my fingers with a Coke Zero would be the best right now. And then I start justification. Well, I've not e eaten anything all day. Then the choice, get in my belly. <laughs> the result, gluttony, sin. Let's make it really real. Can we do that? Let's talk about sex. People leaning in now, man. You mentioned sex. People are like, let's go. <laughs> People that have never listened in church are suddenly like, put their phone down. They're like, what you got to say about this, Pastor? <laughs> let's get real. Sex. What do we do? It's a thought. Then imagination. I bet it would be good with her. I bet it would be, he looks good. Imagination. Watch. Justification. I'm not getting, I'm not getting it at home. So it must be okay. A choice, the text, the sin, you cross the line. See, it's not a big deal until it's a big deal, is it? Drinking and driving, you're like, it's not a big deal until you get pulled over, lose your license, potentially kill someone. Then it's a big deal. Sex, not a big deal. Come on, everyone's doing it until... It costs you your family. It costs you your marriage. Then it's a big deal. So what do we do? I love the fact that the Bible has answers to our questions. And in the book of James, it begins to unpack uh, some answers on how we can avoid the wrong things, how we can learn to say yes to the right things. So check this out. In James chapter 4, verse 7, he said this, Submit yourselves then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So it's kind of two parts. It's got to do with God and it's got to do with the devil. And you need both of these things because, listen, can we be honest? You're not strong enough to do this on your own. Because if you could have, you would have. 
And the reason some of us are still stuck in this pattern is because we don't have the handles to get out or we're choosing not to, one, one or the other. So what Jesus said, watch, to the people that he was closest to, his disciples, the 12, when he needed them the most, this was Thursday, in the Garden of Gethsemane, while he was being arrested, he told them, hey, listen, I need you all right now. This is my tribe. You're my posse right now. I need you. Can you just stay awake and stand guard with me? Because they're about to come and get me. What happened? Well, they drank some wine. They fell asleep. And this is where this text comes from. Jesus said, wow, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Crucifying the flesh, it's a challenge that everyone in this room will make it will have, and you'll have to make a choice daily when it comes to this, this topic. Really, really challenging. So what I want to give you uh, is a thought on this. It's funny because when I was preparing this, I kept, I'm typing notes down for myself. And every time I would type the word flesh, it would autocorrect to flash. And I thought, that's interesting. But you know what? The Lord spoke to me and said this, in a flash, your flesh may fail. Just like that, if you aren't on guard, if you're not ready, be ready because everyone in this room, you put yourself in the wrong situation, in a flash, your flesh may fail. So what are we going to do? Well, if you're taking notes, write this down. Number one, we are going to submit to God. We're going to submit to God. Check this out. Every temptation is an invitation to submit to the authority of God in your life. Every temptation, I don't care what it is, it is an opportunity for you to say, God, I am weak, but you are strong. God, I can't, but you can. God, my flesh may fail, but my God, he never will. I can't, but you can. I can't, but you can. I'm going to submit, I'm going to get under, submit, to the authority of Jesus in my life. I'm going to partner with God's power. Why this is so important, and what I'm going to challenge many of you in this room to do is something that I've had to do recently. At some point, you've got to call it what it is and stop justifying it, and that thing that you've been doing is a sin. It's a sin. And it's easy to brush it off and we can justify it. We go, well, everybody else is doing it. And it's, it's kind of common nowadays. And I'm just telling you, sin breaks the heart of God and sin will mess you up. Why does God say he doesn't want us to sin? Do you think it's just because it's a rule book? Oh, I want to make their life miserable. He's trying to prevent you from jacking up your life. And if we aren't willing to do what he says, man, we better be ready for the consequences because they are coming. Because the Bible said, now watch this, the wage of sin is death. What is wage? Wage is something you earn for something that you do. When you work, you get a wage for what you do. Well, the wage of sin is death. And if you continue in sin, there will be things that die in your life. Your marriage will die. Your relationships will die. Physically, if you're doing the wrong thing, your body will will begin to die, and ultimately, spiritually, you will die. And watch how it works. It's not that God disconnects from you because of the sin. You've been covered by the blood of Jesus if you are a believer. But what happens, the enemy begins to convince you that how could God love someone like you, and you begin to move away from God. So you feel less, uh, less of a presence in your life, there are times, how, how about this? How many of you can relate? There are times you feel really close to God, but man, there are times you feel far from God, and I promise it's connected to the decisions in your life. And this is what happens, and we start feeling disconnected from God. The wage of sin is death. And the thing about sin, why this is so challenging, I think, is we live in a world that screams to us and has no regard for the will of God. No regard. I need a couple people to help me. Uh, hey, front row, Josh Lowe, Jason, can you guys come up here real quick? I need a couple uh, volunteers for this. Come, however you want to get up here. Y'all young enough, you can just jump up. That's right. So, not him. All right. 
So, Josh, you're going to stand right, right here, okay? And you're, you're going to represent, because you look jacked up, you're going to represent the world. Okay? It's just role playing. You're going to represent the world. Now, Jason looks holy today. He's going to represent the kingdom. Okay? Here's what you need to know about the world. What the world is, is Hollywood, it's Netflix, it's back in the day MTV, it is sports, it is advertising, it is music, it is social media, and the world has no regard for God's will. None. All the world cares about is getting you to buy what they're selling. And I don't care what it is, that's what the world wants to do. I'm not criticizing it, I'm just calling it out. That's, the pro that's what the world wants. No regard. The world does not care about your relationship with Jesus. Okay? That's the world. Now, this is the flesh because the world appeals to the flesh, appeals to the skin. Things that feel good. We want things that feel good. Now, over here, we've got kingdom. Now, watch. The Bible says we are in the world, but not of the world. We've been called out, and we are called into a kingdom culture, which really is exactly the opposite of the world. You're called into kingdom living, kingdom culture, and the kingdom represents the spirit, okay? So you've got kingdom, spirit. Over here, you've got world and skin. Now watch this. You take that. Here's what's going to happen. As you go through life and make a decision with Jesus, there will be a tug of war between the world and the kingdom for your life. And every time kingdom pulls you, the world will pull you this way. Kingdom pulls you, world pulls you. And the problem, watch this, here, here's the tension that every single person will have. It is a tension between who you were, who you are, and who God's called you to be. And you've got to decide which way you are going to be pulled because you're going to get pulled one way or another. All right? Thank you, guys. Give it up. Good job. You can, you can keep those signs as souvenirs. You're not of the world. Amen. Amen. So now, now watch what the Bible says in, in Romans 8. To walk in the flesh or to walk in the world is death. In other words, eventually, if you live in that space, it's all going to be over. But to walk in the spirit, kingdom living, is life and peace. I have a question for you. How many people in this room want life and peace? Because I know I do. And some of us have been living under this cloud, living in this dysfunction for far too long. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if you apply these principles that you're going to learn today, your life's going to change. But you've got to learn to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things in your life. To walk in the spirit, not according to the flesh, not according to the world. Amen? So the first thing is we're going to submit to God. Here's the second thing. We are going to learn to resist the devil. Let me ask you a question. Are you a problem for the enemy? I can answer that for you. If over the last year your life has been pretty smooth, no real issues, no real resistance, no real problems, everything kind of goes according to plan, I would say you are probably not a problem to the enemy. But as soon as you begin to fulfill your God-assigned purpose, as soon as you step into the calling that God has for your life, the enemy will dispatch special forces assigned directly to you because now you're a problem. 
Now you're a problem. Before you weren't a problem, but now you are a carrier of light. And wherever you go, the darkness has to flee. Wherever you go, when you come to your workplace, the enemy goes, whoa, somebody's here that knows Jesus. You're depopulating hell. Watch this. You're bringing people out of the world into the kingdom, and that is a problem. Somebody shout, I'm a problem. I'm a problem. I'm a problem for the devil now. I didn't used to be, but things are turning around. I'm a problem for the devil. I'm a problem. How do I know that God has a high calling for my life? How do you know that God's got a high calling? How do I know that God wants to do something different in me? How do I know that God wants to elevate me? How do I know that God wants to use me? I know because, watch this, don't miss this, I know the size of my calling by the size of my problem. And if you've got big problems, come on, somebody, that means you've got a giant calling. If you've got a big problem, that means look out. You're on the verge of breaking through some generational curses that have held your family down for far too long. You're on the verge of a breakthrough taking you from where you were to where God wants you to be. You're on the verge of something. If you've been facing big problems, that means there's a big breakthrough. That means God wants to do something. Come on, somebody. God wants to elevate you. He wants to take you from where you are. Shout, I'm a problem. You want to be a problem to the devil. But the battle, now watch, is telling the enemy no. It's resisting the devil. Opportunity may only knock once but the devil will lean on the doorbell. The devil will just keep knocking at your door. So what I'm teaching you today isn't just for today. You've got to be prepared to do this every day. Say that I'm going to submit to the authority of God in my life. I am going to resist the devil because the devil, he will continue to pursue you. Did you know that the enemy knows your weakness and will always attack you where you are most vulnerable? And he does not come disguised with, with a pitchfork and a long red tail. He comes disguised as everything you've always wanted. If your battle is with anger, he's going to do something to tick you off. If your battle is with drugs, he's going to put somebody in your path that's got that thing that you want. If your battle is with lust, you better believe this is no longer a phone. It's called porn in your pocket. He knows your weakness and will attack you in the area that you are most vulnerable. Uh, vulnerable. Listen, I just want to stir up your faith today. I, I need some of you, your faith to get stirred up to be able to do this so that you understand that I can't, but God can my flesh may fail, come on, but my God never will. And you got to get stirred up. And I want to give you just a couple things um, that will help you resist the devil. And the first thing is this. You need to know that you've got a say in your story. In case this side missed it. Lean in, y'all. You've got a say in your story. What am I saying? I'm saying that God... Is not a puppeteer. God does not write your story. God simply, simply hands you the pen to write the story. Some people, what if I told you part of your problem has been this. You've been blaming God for your problems, and this whole time you gave the devil your pen. Don't let the devil write your story. Do not let the devil dictate your destiny. Come on, you've got to say in your story. You decide this is what my life is going to look like. If you don't like the way your life looks right now, start writing a different chapter. Start writing something different. Make different decisions. You can't erase that, but you can change this. Come on, you still have ink in your pen. You still have breath in your lungs. God still has a purpose for your life. You still have a say in your story. Keep writing. Come on, tell somebody, I'm taking back the pen today. I'm taking back the pen. 
I'm not going to allow the enemy to write one more word in my book, in my life story. He's had enough of my ink. It's about to change. Somebody say amen. 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 And this is what people will say. Watch this. Well, pastor, this is just the way that I am. This is just how I am. It's how I've always been. Have you ever heard of amnesia? It's when you forget who you are. Some of you, you've gotten spiritual amnesia. You've forgotten who you are in Christ. You are an heir to the throne. You have kingdom, you have royal blood running through your veins. God has called you out of that world into this new world, but you have to remember who you are. And Pastor Lynn, I'm going to ask you to come up here. I'm going to put you on the spot because you do this as well as anyone. You've had this uh, kind of in, the, in your hip pocket for a while, and maybe they haven't heard it, but maybe they need a reminder, and you've written something that you can talk about in who we are, Linda, in Christ. Would you preach to the 1130? I'm ready to preach to you guys. You ready? So, if you don't know who you are in Christ, I'm going to tell you who you are in Christ. And it's a simple little thing. It's the ABCs of who you are in Christ. Are you ready? Here you are. A, I am accepted. B, I am blessed. C, I am chosen. D, I am delivered. E, I am equipped. F, I am forgiven. G, I am gifted. H, I am his. I, I am important. J, I am justified. K, I am kind of a big deal. L, I am loved. M, I am made for more. N, I am never alone. O, I'm an overcomer. P, I am purposed. Q, I am qualified. R, I am redeemed. S, I am strong. T, I am transformed. U, I am unique. V, I am victorious. W, I am worthy. X, I am extraordinary. Y, I am yoked to Jesus. And Z, I am a zealot for God. That's who I am. That's who you are. Stay up here. Can I add a couple to the list? I'm a child of God. I belong to God. I've been justified by God. I'm a friend of God. I am a citizen of heaven. I've been chosen before the creation of the world. I am holy and blameless. I am adopted as his child. I'm victorious. I'm born again. I'm a new creation. I'm delivered. I'm set free. I have been brought near to God through the blood of Jesus. I have peace. I have access to the Father. I am a member of God's household. I am secure. I can approach God with freedom and confidence. I am who God says I am. And I still have a say in my story. Somebody take back your pen. You might as well stay standing. If you're not standing, would you stand back up? I'm just trying to get you in shape, y'all. Trying to help you today. Get your spiritual legs under you. People say, why do I stand and clap in church? You stand and clap for the Pittsburgh Steelers. I, well, some of you do. The rest of you, we're praying for you. That's all right to be delivered from the spirit of the Cleveland Browns. We're praying that you'd be delivered from that spirit of evil. But seriously, this is what I'm telling you. Why do we stand and clap? I believe that the word of God is worthy for your applause. The word of God, come on, is worthy to be excited about. Come on, I want you to be excited. I want our church to be excited. I'm almost done. Just a couple things. Here's, here's my last point. Your best life may be on the other side of your next no. In other words, some of the best decisions you will make are the things you said no to. We can resist temptation in the future by eliminating the potential today. In other words, if you put yourself in a position to fail, don't be surprised when you do. If you struggle with alcohol and you think you're over it and you start hanging out with people that drink, guess what's going to happen to you? You're not strong enough. 
It's going to happen. You struggle with drugs. You struggle with lust. I don't care what it is. You pick your poison. You put yourself in a position to fail. Don't be surprised when you do. So what are we trying to do today? We're trying to eliminate the potential for you to fall. Because more than anything, Pastor Lynn and I, we want to see you live your best life. That's our heart. Because, listen, don't miss this. Because if we don't learn to show restraint today, you're going to have to learn to live with regret tomorrow. Come on, I'm trying to help you. It's your choice. So what are we going to do? We're going to submit to God. Say, God, I belong to you. Remind me who I am. We're going to call sin for what it is. Listen, you, sh you shacking up? You can justify it. You know what God calls it? Sin. You gossiping? Sin. Lying, cheating, pride. Let's just call, let's, let's stop messing around with it and let's, let's take a hold of it and say no more. That it stops now. This thing no longer has a hold on my family. It no longer has a hold of me. I'm going to do things differently because I belong to the kingdom. God has called me into the kingdom and he's got a better way for me to live. So here's what I want to do. I want to take a moment and I'm going to have... Uh, one of our worship leaders here, Nate, lead us in something. And I want this to be really personal for you. And we're, we're just going to cry out to God. And I want you to go back to that thing that you thought of at the very beginning when I said, what's your greatest temptation? What's the thing you struggle with? And as we sing this song, I want you to be able to go, God, I can't, but you can. God, I'm about to leave differently as a result of being in your presence. And then we're going to come back and we're going to pray. And we're going to believe you're going to be able to have the strength to say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things in your life. So when uh, you came in, you got that tattoo, that little temporary tattoo. And here's what I'm going to have you do. Uh, put that on this week. And every time you look at that, you're going to be reminded of this moment. And you're going to say, when I'm tempted, I'm going to submit to God. I'm going to resist the devil. I'm going to align my will with God's will to live the life God's called me to live because Jesus I'm, I'm weak but you're strong and with your power in me there's nothing I can't do amen let's pray together would you bow your heads and close your eyes today Father we just come to you as your people 
God just uh, trying to live kingdom. God, but the world yells so loud. The world just screams and appeals to our flesh. And sometimes, God, we just think, man, that's the best life. And, and we're so afraid to step out of that world because it's the only world we know. But Jesus, right now, I am praying that you give people a glimpse of kingdom living in here right now, what their life could be like. Jesus, if they just release those temptations to you and start this new life in Christ. So as we're praying with your heads bowed and eyes closed, would you just be honest today? For anyone that's been here and uh, there's been a temptation that's just been so great, and some of you, it's a pattern. Maybe the temptation's like just kind of backing away from God. You're just not as excited about church, about God. Maybe that's a temptation. For some of you, it's lust. For some of you, it's a, it's a drug or it's a drink. For some of you, maybe it's anger. I, I don't know what it is. But if, if that's you today, would you just be honest right now and just lift your hand and say, man, that's me. I deal with some stuff. Yep. Just about every hand is lifted in here. I know my hand is lifted. And uh, take this moment to come close to God. Just say, God, really, I need you right now. God, I don't want to stay in this place. Not one more minute. Help me start saying yes to the right things and no to the wrong things. So, Father, here we are. You see us, God, reaching out to you. And your promise is if, if we call out your name, Jesus, you will come to our rescue. But we have to do what you've called us to do, God, and you've given us the handles today to make progress. So, Father, we thank you. You can put your hands down, and if you just uh, keep your heads bowed, I want to talk to the person that, uh, that maybe you're here, maybe it's your first time, maybe you've been coming for a while, but something hit different today. It's different for you. And you have never really fully surrendered to God. Like, you've been coming to church, but you know, like Monday through Saturday, you're still living your life, and you're like, man, I don't really care about my language. I don't care about anything. I just kind of do that, but I, I'll slip back into church, but today's different, and you've heard from God, and you're like, Jesus, today's the day I'm going all in. I'm stepping into your kingdom. I'm releasing the world, and this is my moment. I'm not going to mess around with this stuff anymore. Either it's real or it's not, and I believe God's speaking to you, and if that's you today, and you're like, this is the day I'm going all in. On the count of three, I just want you to boldly slip your hand in the air. Okay, don't miss your moment. One, two, three. That's it. You're going all in today. Wow, hands going up today. Just put your hand up. God bless you guys. God bless you guys for every hand that's raised. Father, you see us right now. And I pray for each one of these people, God, that they're saying, I am not messing around anymore. Jesus, I heard from you today. It was personal. God, you're calling me out of the world into the kingdom so I can make kingdom impact with my life. You've got something greater for me, God. I know by the size of my problems, I, you've re revealed the size of my calling. So, Father, we thank you right now. I thank you for the life change that happens in this room every weekend. God, but we don't want it to stay here. We want to take what's in here out there so the world can see that Jesus is alive and still changing lives. So, Father, we love you. Continue to do what you've started here throughout this series, God, that we can say no to the wrong things and yes to the right things. And, Father, we do love you, we trust you, and we do celebrate you. And because the tomb is empty, we can shout that the best is yet to come. Come on now.